today about something very, very important, something outside the box. And just when you hear makeup and you see this person in front of you, you are pretty much wondering, what is she going to say? Well, I'm going to start and take it a little back. This was 2015. It was when I came to university. I was about 17 years old at that time. I had come to study my bachelor's for interior architecture. And when I had come here, I noticed so many things were different. The food was different, the culture was different, but also the people were different. And when I say different, I don't mean bad different. You see, every single time I would meet somebody, there was just something remarkable. I really understood, I just loved about them. If they didn't have amazing skin, their hair was on point. The makeup, oh my gosh, don't even get me started there. And I was just like, I want to look like that. And just like we constantly see something nice with somebody, we start to ask questions. Where did you get that? How did you do that? And I did the same thing. I then started on the first place people search information from, social media. I went on YouTube and I typed the few basic things I thought I needed, the essentials for makeup, eyeshadow, lipstick, foundation, and I typed in the same results. And as you can see from this particular slide, in as much as the work is very good, there's something you're actually not observing. Take a little bit closer. Do you see anything different? Or anything out of the ordinary? No? I went to also YouTube and Instagram. I just typed in makeup. These were all the results, apart from them looking very beautiful. Do you notice anything different? Why? More on Instagram. Amazing work. Things you don't really look at. And when you see this, out of all these tens of search results, only second last row is where you see a person of color. That is something we don't observe every day when we look at social media, when we look at people, or when we just simply go in stores. Carefully understand how I use the word person of color. Just because I am African and I'm saying that, you're probably referencing it to me saying a black person. But no, a person of color is actually any person who is not white on Caucasian. It could be South Asian, Arab descent, African, African American, South American, and that's a very huge amount. Over 2 billion people on this planet are actually people of color. And, and I say this, I'm sure you're wondering, okay, what's new? So when I learned this information, I had my list, the basic list, you know, the same things, eyeshadow, eyeliner, lipstick. And I went to my local beauty supply store in, this was when I was 17, and when I went there, I will never forget this moment. I had gone to the store, and just as I was going, the people, with, the people working in the store were just being panicked, like, oh my God, oh my God, what is she gonna do? What does she want here? But still, I went in. When I went in, one lady bravely came to me, and she's like, can I help you? Are you lost? Because she was wondering, what am I doing in there? And I was like, no, I'm actually looking for some makeup. And she's like, no, sorry, we don't have anything for you. When I thought that, I said, okay, probably, you know, it's a foreign place. They don't have my color. No big deal. But when I was in the store, this is what I was just looking at. I was looking at makeup products where maybe there's only two shades that could work for people of color. Look at how many, how, whose skin is even that color? Exactly. That's what I don't, how are there so many shades? And maybe two or three, like maybe a person of color is an afterthought. And do I have to say anything? Do I have to really say anything? The problem is right there. And this is something we overlook every single day. So even I thought, okay, maybe it's in stores. Don't panic. I went online. 
And when I would be picking a complexion product, it could be foundation or concealer. This was the options. These were the options. People of color, a different variety of ranges in people. There is no way that last shade will work for the hundreds of people of color. With that information, I still decided to learn on my own. I looked at very prominent social media influencers and learned a trick or two, and I started applying it on myself. And like any great artist, I have to start from somewhere. When I found out this information, I thought to myself, okay, so this is how things are. What does this actually mean? I took more curiosity in this particular topic, and like any great artist, I had to start from somewhere. If you saw the makeup I was applying when I was 17, 18, and what I'm doing now, there's a drastic difference, a very big difference. Now that I think about it, my friends who were there around that time aren't really my friends because there is no way you would let me walk up with me looking like that. When I thought about that, went online, did my research, and I said, okay, this is how it is. And then I realized there's a bigger problem when it comes to makeup. It's not necessarily the shops and the retailers distributing makeup which have a problem, as I've already explained, but there's more to it. You see, when you take this case and think about it outside the box, you do realize that the beauty industry has this particular standard of beauty. And unfortunately, the ugly truth is people of color aren't considered to be in that particular category of what it means to be beautiful. And we can obviously see that because what other reason could possibly be there for brands not creating products that could work for people of color? Maybe you would think to yourself, okay, it's maybe hard. Actually, it's really not hard at all. You see, foundations are actually very easy to make. They just mainly comprise of a water base, a silicone base, and pigments, of which those pigments could either be cool-toned or warm-toned, the warm leaning more of people of color. I know the guys are wondering, what is she saying? Think of it like this. Let's say where you're from, or your town, or your city, or your country. Everybody is size eight going up in terms of shoes. You go to a new place, you go in the Nike store, you go in any shoe shop, you find shoes you really like or shoes you've been admiring for a long time. And when you want to get it, they tell you, no, sorry, we don't have your size here. But not just there. In every single shoe shop you find across the world. What does that say to you? Because clearly, it shouldn't be hard to make a shoe, right? Same for makeup. It's not that hard. And then, when I figured that was going on, I still continued to practice, you know, very prominent social media, follow, sorry, social media influencers and brand ambassadors and people in the makeup industry, such as Laura Lee, Kylie Jenner, James Charles, even if you don't know any of the people I've mentioned, you at least know one person from the list. With that information, I still dug a little deeper because it just didn't make any sense to me. And how social media plays a very important role in this whole topic. You see, brands have learned a very good marketing scheme, which is to advertise to us right in front of our face in the one place we're paying the most attention, social media. You are on your phone, on Instagram, and people are talking to you. How often do you hear what they're saying? All your attention is on your phone, and that's where it starts. It's not just what products show up in stores, what brand is making what makeup. It's also what faces you see in ads. When you see a brand promoting a particular product, how often do you actually see a person of color in that post? A good example would be lipstick. When you see tutorials or brands advertising lipsticks, you then realize why are they using somebody with lip fillers when you can get somebody who naturally has plump lips? Another example is, if you look at anti-aging products, I have never, ever, to this day, seen a person of color in an ad for anti-aging products. 
I'm not quite sure if that's supposed to be taken quite literally when you say black don't crack or if they're saying something else. In the 1900s, Madam C.J. Walker and Tim Samuelson were actually cultural historians and they made millions of dollars creating makeup for people of color. And that was back in the 1900s. This is 2019. Makeup companies are still not creating makeup for people of color. In 2017, a brand emerged and they did something phenomenal. They created makeup that could fit every single person. Their concept was to be inclusive. So what they did on their first launch is they created 40 different makeup shades of which 22 of those shades belong to people of color. If that isn't inclusive, then really, I don't know what you call inclusive. And just with that launch, in the first two days, online and in stores, the most sold out product was actually the darkest shade. So from that information, clearly, we're here, we have a presence, and social media is where we start to see all these things. But lately, something very phenomenal has been happening. We start to see underrepresented categories start being represented by brands. For example, I can give you Nikita Dragon. If you don't know her, I had her in my slides, but if you don't know her, she's a transgender brand ambassador and CEO of a beauty line. We also have Manny MUA, James Charles, Jeffree Star as the first male brand ambassadors. That's where we start to see unrepresented brands start being inclusive. And it's the same for people of color makeup. You see, it's not just what you apply in your face, what lipstick you wear, what's in your hair, what highlighter you have. Makeup is actually more than that. You see, take off your lashes, take off your eyebrows, have nothing on your face. How does that make you feel? And I bring you back to my question, are you beautiful? You see, 4% of people in the world actually fit in the concept of beauty, if you were to compare yourself. And when you see that, you realize that all of us are drastically different, so why would there only be 4%? When it comes to makeup, it's not just marketing makeup, it's not just seeing makeup in stores. When you don't have makeup, how does that make you feel? Some would say, I still feel pretty strong, confident. Others would feel, no, not so much. I will give you an example. When I came for my rehearsal today, I had no makeup on. I was just feeling like, oh my gosh, I was messing up everywhere. But when I got dressed and I'm here, I actually don't feel that scared anymore. That's a good example to see the positive effect of makeup. People don't wear makeup for people, but we wear it for ourselves. Not only does it empower us to feel more confident and strong in ourselves, but it starts to make us believe in ourselves, even in things we never thought we could do. I never thought I would ever give a TEDx talk, but here I am. That is exactly what makeup does, male or female. You start to feel that way. And when brands are not inclusive or creating makeup for people of color, they're indirectly trying to say, no, sorry, honey, you're not beautiful, you can't have this. What other logical reason would be there for them not to create makeup for people of color? That is the question I'm asking today. That is something we see every time, but we completely overlook. When you have no makeup on, or let me not, I think that's to generalize. When you aren't in makeup, you start to feel different. When people like brands do not recognize you. For men, look at it from that angle I gave you as shoes. And for women, you can understand it on makeup. When you don't have that, or when people are not representing you in that category, you feel alone, you feel unrespected, you feel like they don't care what you think, your opinion doesn't matter. When really, it does. It should. You're giving cosmetics company money, they might as well cut it for you. Actually, 
the beauty industry is a $1.3 trillion industry, undeniably very successful. Just recently, Kylie Jenner was the first youngest female billionaire just from makeup in under five years. That's how successful he is, and that is not including of nails, hair, or body. And with my platform and with my talk today, I just want to understand and to make people feel that you're not defined by what the world thinks by you. What they consider beautiful is not beautiful. What is beautiful is exactly who you are. What you look like on the outside, what you feel like in the inside, how your heart thinks, all those things reflect what beauty is. And we don't need social media to tell you, oh, your waist isn't that thin, oh, no, your hair isn't that long, to feel beautiful. And not only brands should change, but I would like to challenge brands, retailers, companies. Are you making makeup for people of color and are you advertising to them? And my, my platform is to reach people at the one place they have that attention to remind them that you are beautiful. What can you do? There's a lot you can do. It doesn't matter if you have one follower, 10, 100, 1,000. It really doesn't matter at all. It's just as easy as getting your phone. If you see an ad you don't like, where they're not, you feel like people are not being represented properly, you have a voice. Use it. You don't necessarily have to say something or be a troll. Something as simple as retweeting, resharing. You're not saying much, but you're passing a message that the world can see. Doesn't matter if you have two followers. Those two people will see that information and they will tell something else. That is exactly how information reaches us. And with my platform, I just, I have created a relationship with social media, which is looked at mainly negatively, but I've learned to have a relationship with it positively to remind people like you that it doesn't matter what the world sees, what they think, what you see, it's you. If you ever look in the mirror, take a bad picture, or just see somebody, change your attitude and say, wow, I'm beautiful. Even if it's a bad picture, you'd be like, ooh, that's me. Praise yourself. Thank you.